<laughs> yeah, I have to do an intro, right? Yeah. Uh, they... <laughs> <laughs> just sat here for like two seconds, just staring at the screen. Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name's Brian, I guess. And I'm Ethan. I'm and, here. Yep, we're, we're present. Uh, and uh, this is our second game of round two, which is the last game of round two. Yep, that's how it works. And this is going to be Protectorate into Infernals. So this week I'm playing David Bergstorm's um, Protectorate pairing, and I feel like as soon as I saw Brian's pairing, I like I'm playing Harvey, just because with the Tormentor nerf now going down the mat six, awe matters a lot more. Ashen Veil from the Archons matters a lot more, and then like if he drops Omodamus, I can purify Synergy every turn. If he drops Zadaroth, I can stop Rates of Torments because I'm not going to purify against her and take like 2d3 damage every time. Yeah. So it just like Harvey was the drop. And yeah, just based on the scenario, I'm like, I can martyrdom, keep the flags alive, and pretty much just try to bubble up. So I, when I looked at the uh, pairing for the protectorate stuff i'd been thinking about this game for a while because of course we've had some time to think about it since these games happen the way they do for us and um i felt like zadaroth might have had some of the better tools to deal with uh the things that harbinger brings along with her but um when it came to like w the caster's effectiveness i felt like omen Deimos has the ability to really force a lot of um martyrdoms or uh just a lot of opportunity to do a lot of damage to some things with being such an influential caster or at least a aggressive one so i decided to drop oma Deimos, and uh, one of the other reasons why i decided to do it was because of synergy i know i'll be uh, mostly casting it every turn but uh it is a buff to my mat that is solely focused on me whereas zadaroth has to do things like make sure runewood's hanging around and get black spot out which isn't something she's always going to be able to do so i decided to play a little frisky and drop an Omodemos list with uh, five Tormentors. This is Stephanie Barry's uh, Omodemos list. Now, five Tormentors is, uh, I think that's probably, I still feel like that's like a hot debate for the Infernal players, but let's see how the uh, the game shakes out with the five Tormentors and the rest of the support staff here. So I won the roll to go first. I rolled a six, and I was like, I auto win. Anastasia, you rolled a five, and then like, I did. on turn one, I was like, oh, yeah, you have a uh, runewood. Yep, I got I got <clears throat> intelligence, too. He's a smart cookie. Yeah, because I forget he has that, too. He has the Infernals problem of too many rules. Uh, but basically, turn one, kind of like last game, I'm running up turn one just to leverage martyrdom. And now with Brian only having the well for a gun, like I can play Harvey a little bit more aggressive and basically I'm just running stuff up. I left one initiate within 12, just in case Brian wants to take a shot and you can't see it through the Menite, but the next two are not base to base with him. So if Brian did get cheeky and shoot, I could let him die at armor 15 and then make everybody around him angry and get an extra three inches on the, the Menite. Uh, but that's really the only cute trick I do top of one. Uh, Harvey is has 10 focus but i'm going to be using dials this game just because the tokens get in the way i think there's a couple turns where i still like keep it over there out of habit but i feel like for harby dials for the health and dials for the focus just make life so much easier yeah that they do when you have that much focus kicking around i just feel as bad because like it's not as readily available to you like i like having the stack of tokens next to her yeah so you can just see what's going on but like i just move and heal so much like it's just it's a pain like oh the the horror the of horror lugging of around 10 focus with you every turn it's just like i need those extra three seconds it would take to pick them all up yeah especially in a a list that usually grinds anyways so I ran up the Punch Monk within 12 and the Champ, but they're still within three of the Initiate. So like, if Brian wants to shoot, he's going to make some people angry. And that's me. So the deployment for this was a little screwball -y. I still like feel like I can utilize some of the forest in the middle with uh, having ghostly on my feet turn at least. Um, my objective for this game is going to be Pathfinder and you got to see my lucky uh, my lucky dream here of rolling three corpses up on turn one with the uh, the gate. 
Um, so I decide that I'm going to start utilizing the forest and some of these clouds to try and hide some of my tormentors to make sure that Ethan can't just come into me right away, because I definitely have better ways to mitigate that forest than he does. And I know I need to start getting up in the middle of the table because uh, on... Uh, bunkers, it's a kind of a nightmare scenario when you're playing against Harbinger. She just broadcasts so much staying power across the table. And if there's one thing that the Infernals army kind of already has an issue with, it's trying to uh, put forward a bunch of contesting pieces that are kind of just throwaways outside of your heavies. Um, all of your solos are really important and they become resources as the game goes on. So uh, I try to get Runewood up in the middle here too because I feel like he's going to be a really important piece to this game. Uh, being able to curse uh, Ethan's stuff and being able to get you know my three attacks or so with the uh, uh, Tormentors, like that'll get me three attacks, right? So I could like punch a... Um, punch a dude and watch you martyr it, punch another dude, and then if I'm hitting the same thing, I can headbutt something. So it's just nice to be able to get the ability to kind of crack these extra hits out, and I feel like Runewood helps me do that. Outside of that, I'm trying to make sure that I stay out of the line of sight for out of line of sight for the paladin or the champion that's up on the top of the screen. And I backed up a little bit to stay out of uh, the charge from the Menite with... Uh, um, Crusaders call on the bottom. I think I give it up to the Paladin or the Tormentor charge to the Paladin, but I think I'm okay with that in general. And then the next thing I do here is just kind of reconfigure my cultists a little bit. Um, they, the min unit of cultists ran up and now the, the, the big unit with Orin in it is running up and we're just going to start punching my own cultists because, uh, that's what you need. That's what you do to get the extra souls on, uh, Orin midwinter or Orin, whatever he's called in, his infernal version and uh or in the traitor <clears throat> yeah or in the the something or the the dude with the funky hair like he's kind of like he, he got some aquanet or something and he <laughs> did this weird frill out thing so like he's borrowing some farrah fawcett business that's what happens when you sign the infernal contract that's what he wanted he's like man i just really want a good haircut i don't even i didn't i thought i remember reading the fluff like he didn't even know he was an infernal like he was that deep of an agent I thought that like he, he was, forgot he was an infernal. I thought I, for whatever reason, I feel like Orin Midwinter would be the kind of guy who knows what he's doing is trying to pee in everyone's Cheerios. But I'm not much of a fluff bunny. I just remember like a hedgehold scroll that was like he like woke up and he's like, oh, yeah, I remember I was an infernal. I lost my memory. I was hiding it from myself or something. I could be way off. I just remember reading that scroll like two years ago. And it'll give something some, but something uh, for the people in the comments section to talk about. Oh, yeah, least. there's a shrieker. Yeah, so Regna pops out a shrieker. And uh, and I think that um, I was pro I was contemplating a Lamenter just because of the, the debuffs that it gives. And uh, just I don't really put Lamenters on the table very often. But having an extra gun is really nice. And if I get this in the right spot, maybe I can start chipping some damage on some other things with the Admonisher shots. But then the wretch kind of runs up around here because he's going to be my t summoning target for turn one. And this is, uh, some people might like, uh, you know, flip over in their chair on this because it is the only source of grievous wounds that I have. And it would be really important to have that in the Harbinger matchup. But when you end up bringing five tormentors, you end up losing a lot of support. And uh, I'm kind of, I'm not spoiled for choice when it comes to these marked souls. So I turn him into a desolator right away and end my turn one finally. Yeah, Brian sacrificing the wretch means I can be a little bit more. I can apply martyrdom over more. Yeah, you're a little. You can be a little fast and loose. And here I'm measuring out a champion of the wall charging hawk and just getting an impact attack. Like I don't expect the impact attack to do much, but Brian didn't put up locked horns turn one. He just did synergy. So I'm like, if I can get some damage before those guys turn into arm a billion. I mean, they're only arm 21, which is the same armor as initiates, so it's fine. Yeah, right. It's perfectly okay. Yeah. So, like, and then, like, I go back for a little bit here, and, like, I even say at the table, like, I'm wasting more time than Harvey should do. Like, Harvey's game plan is just turtle and make you come to me, but I was, like, we had talked about, like, oh, you, you sacrificed the wretch. Why would you do that? And you're, like, well, I only have five other marked souls, and it's, like, I'm not going to do Regna, the Hermit, or Orin, or Roger turn one. Yeah, the only thing that I really think has like a legitimate claim to being a, a turn one sacrifice is maybe Veil and Hawk, because you don't have much, you don't have anything for stationary or knockdown outside of uh, 
like Warjacks doing things. And uh, the tactician really isn't that big of a deal to me. So um, maybe he probably would have been a better deal to get rid of turn one. And I'd be able to project that uh, that desolator a little bit further forward and still have the wretch hanging around. But, uh, you know, that's one for the history books. Time will never know. Maybe so there's an alternate universe out there where someone, the other Brian sacrificed Vale and Hawk turn one. I mean, there's theories about it. Uh, so there I'm just measuring where I have to be for martyrdom and I'm trying to respect his 11 inch like trample threat with a uh, ghostly he's not close enough to the the gate to get placed so it's only 11 over there and like when I'm doing this I'm thinking about him getting straight to Harby and I'm not even picturing like oh yeah I got two units of initiates that are going to be in front of me like there's no chance he gets to me. Yeah, you're kind of you're layer you're thinking backwards in your layers right now. Yeah, I'm just thinking like I do not want to lose Harvey cuz I feel like I just got to play the long game. And I tried to see if I could impact attack Runewood, but with the woods it was just too far cuz like if I can take two mark souls off bottom of two with your limited soul resources, like I can stop the the summoning train early. Yeah, I won't be able to snowball so easy with all these tormentors if you start ripping those off, but I think uh, Runewood got positioned in a decent enough place to where I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just playing KG on the bottom here. I'm just going to make the Shrieker come to me instead of putting myself on the flag. So I shifting stance, the monk, put initiates within, put the menite within. So I'm like, okay, if you want to kill somebody, you're going to make him mad. And we have an actual sanctifier now. Yeah, with his big mace. And I'm kind of doing the same thing on the other side. I'm putting it so he would have to trample if he feed a turn two. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, initiates. And I just put them base to base with her just to if you want to try and catch more than one, uh, you're within Ashen Veil range and awe. Yep. So then it's like it's real funky. And it's worth noting Harvey did feet this turn and she purified unless she hasn't gone yet. I think she maybe not hasn't gone yet is what the deal is. Oh, no, she has not. Now she's literally going. Because you can see synergy hanging out. I had my... to back her up. Like, she should be like an inch forward. I had to clear everybody up. And yeah, then, you were just trying to be cagey with her and get your martyrdom where it needed to be. Yeah, basically I'm seeing where do I need to be. And now, now I'm only martyring from the back of his base, not the front. So, like, if I pr drop him off the pony then like i can't be in the zone and martyrdom so like that's a mistake that's what i get from like my third game with harvey yeah it's it, the dragoon math when you have things to do with them when they when they croak is uh is is rough sometimes if you're not paying attention so he charges in gets an impact attack i did put up a, a guided hand just for funsies uh it hit did like no damage the charge attack left hawk on one yeah i only rolled a or boost three, of nine three boxes because he's got 10 boxes. Oh, yeah. I left him on three. But he's on fire. And I'm like, okay. I was really hoping this charge would just kill him because he's armor 17. 17, yeah. So it's dice minus one, but I only rolled a boost of nine. Just move up, dance around, and then I'm just keeping him outside charge threats just so he can come in next turn. He might be 18. Alrighty, so turn two comes around, and uh, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of like scenario leverage to push here, and I actually have a little bit of a problem in my zone now because uh, that um, that paladin is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get rid of. So uh, I end up having Regna cut for a couple to get back up to three on her uh, on her essence. Um, Omidemos pops uh, the one uh, cultist from the min unit that fuels him back up. And uh, now I'm just trying to figure out, like, how do I want to unpack this? One of the hardest things about playing against Harbinger is that um, you really need to have your plan figured out while your opponent's going because every single second counts uh, when you're playing against her. And uh, what I'm thinking about is just ways to get rid of this Paladin because if I don't do that, it means that I'm probably not going to be scoring anything this turn. And then once I slip that way and have Ethan score on the bottom of two in his zone... That kind of sets me up for a really bad time. And speaking of bad times, uh, I forgot that she feeded and uh, just kind of got lost in my own little mathematics and was like, oh, I can uh, get the initiates with a curse and one of these tormentors and start taking things that way too. Um, I, so Harbinger feeds on him, and since I'm within five of the Menite, he just gets roasted. So um, I just uh, you know kind of move on from that and dust myself off, and I'm going to start punching on this... Uh, 
paladin, but I think I might jigger him back and forth because I'm trying to do some other things. I think maybe I wanted the you wanted desolator. synergy up. Yes, too. synergy and the desolator. I think were the big things I wanted to get up this turn. Um, but I have Vale and Hawk kind of move over and try to take a punch at him just to get some extra damage on it because I think every every attack counts. Um, but obviously not enough that uh, that Valen Hawk misses and then just repositions back over onto the uh, d- out of the way, which uh, gets my Desolator up, which is kind of the real reason why he went, because I wanted to try and fit all these heavies where I needed them to go. So the Desolator's up outside of melee, takes a boosted spray and hits, so now we're at least neg two armor on that guy, and he takes a little bit of damage, but not a ton from that. But now it's just going to be easier for this Tormentor to start doing some work in it, and it's it's still really frustrating even just looking at the way things are, because that Paladin just is right in the middle of my zone and stopping me from getting to the bottom side of that table, uh, along with all that rubble there too. So um, maybe the Lamenter would have been better than the Shrieker just for fly, but... Um, at any rate, where I think the tormentor that is down there started punching the paladin a little bit, or hasn't started yet. Maybe uh, maybe something else is going on here. I think you just repositioned up there. You tried to, uh, you took a magic attack from Orin at the punch monk. So I was just like, okay, I'm good. You missed because he was out of range. Oh, and just it was it was Roger that did Roger. It. Yeah, he tried to take a breath of corruption and then, um. And then you skedaddle a little bit. So Roger was just moving up because this is going to be the turn that uh, I utilize him. So Omademos goes and threads the needle between the two of those and can actually get the the two inches, even though things are so clumped together. And he's going to start the synergy train and uh, starts punching on the paladin and does some decent damage because with uh, the... Um, the spray from the Desolator, he's doing decent work. I think we're dice minus one. Dice minus three, because he's 18, and he's 20 with a shield, oh, yeah, so he's with back down to 18. So minus three, and we, we knock him off the horse, which gets him out of the zone because Ethan wants him to still be in martyrdom range. So uh, that means that I at least have that problem taken care of. So um, I could just stop dealing with this paladin, but uh, instead I'm going to try and keep working on it. So I have some other tormentors kind of reposition a little bit. I'm still trying to be a little bit cagey and protect myself from a lot of these charges. Uh, So some of the tormentors start shuffling around a bit, and now I'm trying to figure out what is it that I'm going to do with this uh, with this well, or what is uh, what what are some of the other things that I can mess with. and uh, trying to get the reposition on these is or the little teleport with the soul or with the gate, sorry, um, is not something that I'm thinking about right now because there's no way for me to really project my threat super far. So I have the Shrieker walk up and uh, just decide to take a, a random shot at a Punch Monk. And I think I... You shot the Paladin. Oh, shot the Paladin. That's right. I shot him because he wasn't in melee anymore. And you boosted damage and you only left him on like one box. Yeah, it wasn't super great for him. I think the dice roll was not... Uh, super hot so he was still armor 16 dismounted with the neg 2 because he's 16 base up to 18 yep and the admonisher guns pal 13 so it was only dice off three it should have should have done a little bit of work or or probably could have gotten him but just the dice didn't show up for him uh so now my tormentor that i've been talking about for the past 10 minutes it feels like starts going and is going to start oh no no, it's not even that it's the stupid well yeah now the well shot i tried a tough i failed and i rolled a two for martyrdom so it took three Yep. So I reloaded and uh, and yeah, it took and hit another three. Yep. So that or it was took an, four now. Yeah, that was another martyrdom shot. So uh, at least I've started bleeding out a lot of damage. I think this is kind of one of the the traps of Harbinger. Unless you can really start threatening her, um, trying to take all the attacks to force martyrdom sometimes doesn't always work out well for you because I really don't have anything that's putting her under pressure right now. So she's between the healing objective and the hierophant. And yeah. all that focus. There, she took another four. Yeah, she's taking a ton, ton of damage right now. Um, but still, it doesn't matter so much because I'm just like throwing attacks at this uh, paladin, just chipping away at my clock like nobody's business. And the paladin did tough. Yeah. And I finally took a retaliatory because I forgot to do it after the first one. The paladins are tough and steady, so like if they just tough, I don't have to martyr them. And like that's why I put them back in martyrdom range. Because I'm like, I want you to waste essence. And here, I think you're even like debating: Do you keep buying attacks? Because it's like, yeah, exactly. I was, I, I was like, you know, you've martyred oh, quite a bit, so I think I say, screw it. I've uh, taken ten damage from martyrdom. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just gonna keep rolling on or keep going for it. So, um, 
I think that uh, I think even now you're like, should I do it or not? And I opt not to in case you get something on a punch monk. Yep. So that uh, that takes care of that business. And having two essence on myself isn't so bad. That hermit is hanging out behind the well. You can't quite see him, but uh, he'll be able to help uh, fuel him up a little bit, and I won't be worried too much about um, tithing. But then uh, the the next ones kind of just position up to still again stay safe but um project their uh their influence on the table a little bit i'm kind of setting myself up for bearing a little bit further in on turn three with my feet so i've kind of got this this uh counter charging crab people section over here and uh now we're just kind of getting the cultists up so that they can start um topping off their essence with the i forget what the spell is that they use is called for that but with being range three and being able to do that is super sweet so i'm able to top off most of the tormentors that are on the bottom there uh and get uh i think we topped off the uh desolator so um i guess the tormentors didn't really need any it was just the desolator and maybe some other things that were getting some maybe the tormentor that got some in the turn before or this this turn that's right because roger turned into a stupid tormentor i don't think he oh yeah he did So Brian playing KG did not contest either flag, either end flag or my zone. So I auto went to two to one and I'm going to auto go four to one if I contest his zone. And so I'm like, if I clear this middle flag, I win or er, math. Yeah, right. Because you see, I'm at one, you're at two. If you contest, that puts you at three to one, just being in your zone. And so you have the flag on the far side of the, or on the top side of the table. So that'll put you at, uh, at five to one. And then you just need to get six to one to, to bash me out, which is either the bottom flag or the top flag or the middle flag. Right? One, two, three, four. Yeah. If I score all flags and my zone and contest, I would go six to one. Yep. So I'm like, can I kill two tormentors in the middle under Lockhorns without taking counter charges to contest the middle flag on top of it? And I'm like, do I go for it? Like I could just play defensive, just keep the attrition train running. Like Brian gave me free control points. So I feel like I can snowball that with Harvey just because like once she gets a lead, it's hard to fight back. Yeah. And I really chipped away a lot of my clock in that last turn, trying to deal with the paladin and then like just rallying back from losing runewood for nothing. So I'm like up on top, I'm, like if this champion charges in, I can get an impact attack and a pow 16 Lance into one of the guys contesting. And I was like, okay, then those other two can't counter charge into the middle. And I'm like, can this a sanctifier trample with the woods there and get melee on him without crusaders call because i really want to heal just because i am down to like six boxes at this yeah point. it's pretty pretty sad for harbinger right now yep and so like i can get the sanctifier to where that proxy is and i'm like okay he tramples he buys two pow 18s with battle dice minus three if i walk the initiates do a cma if i uh do the menite archon flying up and punching like is that enough? And I'm like, I don't think this is going to be enough damage. But at this point, like, if I can just jam him and keep him from getting to the flags as well, like, that's a win for me. And then, like, the paladin up on top will be in his zone contesting. So there he goes. I do my impact attack. I hit two of them. But it's dice minus nine, so it's like... Yep, not doing a ton there. And then this is where I get to pull a trap card on you. Yep, he counter charges towards the other flag. Yep, so my hope here is that um, with Ethan not engaging the far uh, Tormentor, it gives me the opportunity to counter charge. So I'm trying to thread the needle of getting him far enough far enough forward so I don't leave melee. And then that is, uh, then I'm trying to make sure that I'm within four inches of the flag to contest that top one because Ethan doesn't have a whole lot of resources up there to deal with that Tormentor. So I feel like uh, even though the Paladin came in to try and get into my zone, I've now kind of made it a wash by contesting that top flag and uh, that kind of like piddles your turn a little bit. Yep, and the the champion only rolls a seven on the charge, so it dice minus five, he does two whole damage. Yep. And I'm like, well, that sucks. He sure did charge into the belly of the beast, though. There's there's five tormentors in there. Somebody had to do it. Yep. Uh, but now, like, the top jack that you can see behind there is in charge range, but I didn't allocate him focus. So he just charges, gets the crit fire, 
With battle, he's a whopping POW 20. Yep. So dice minus one charge does pretty good. But I acknowledge that. Yep. And does all right still. Yeah, still does all right. It's like I took you from doing really awesome to doing like good. And by that, I mean it, I took out the first grid, which is irrelevant because yeah. we're in melee. So mm-hmm. it's like, woo. Yep, he takes a pretty good chunk of damage, though, but it's not enough to kill him, so there's I don't feel like I'm too worried about that Tormentor leaving the zone there. And now you've kind of had it to had it to, had it up to here with my counter charges and run the um the initiates to engage that bottom one so I don't do the same thing on the other flag. And then I have two shield guards next to the punch monk and the menites back there, so if he kills the front guy, he gets angry. There's the trample. Pow twenty. Does or pow eighteen? Yeah, pow, dice minus pow three 18, yep. did two damage and then two damage again. So it's like, okay, yep. Menoth's fury was not with that sanctifier today. It was just a sad time. So now I'm just running up my jacks just to contest the middle, and then like then I'll get more hand of vengeance triggers for next turn. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out also like there's th- that initiates going. I was like, well, I don't have to contest the top flight because you have no solos over there. Yeah. But then this will help me push forward with the Menite. And then I do the same trick as before. And then yeah, the book the... walks up, does no spells. And then I believe Harvey is activating. And then I make... Or well, film, film, and, I... film and goes in Stone and Mortars. Yep, because you had to get out of my way. I wanted to be able to... Uh, the Vout runs. I wanted to be able to martyrdom basically everywhere. But now here's like a big mistake. I heal myself for six because I allocated two. I end up healing myself for another one because the Hierophant hasn't gone. And I forgot to pull from the rack and purify um, synergy. synergy away. Going into my turn three, things definitely came up millhouse for me. Um, I wasn't able to contest the bottom flag at all, but definitely keeping all the Tormentors on the flag in the middle and not losing any, and then also making sure that I don't lose the Tormentor on the fl- on the top flag that I used to contest makes me feel like now the grind for Harbinger is going to get a little bit more grindy for Ethan. It's not just going to be stopping me from killing his things but he's got to start doing things to me too so i kind of i don't play a similar game to harbinger right now like this list should be a lot more aggressive but i'm uh i'm at least kind of saying i'm throwing 24 boxes worth of arm 21 guys in your face so now you've got to deal with them i am up four to one for what it's worth because i did score another two yes i i'm i'm the the scenario problem is not lost on me, but I still feel like I'm in a not bad place because the things that Ethan ended up doing here were uh, he gave me two things that he can't martyrdom. So I get to shave off two uh, warjacks and uh, I'll still have a ton of tormentors left. I decide to take um, like a, a, a spray that hopefully gets me something here. Um, it's going to line up the desolator spray on the... Uh, two initiates and then the punch monk so now that i'm in awe i keep forgetting that the uh, tormentors are living so they get affected by it uh he doesn't really connect with anything but now i end up taking the spray where i really wanted it to go which was into this uh um sanctifier sanctifier. yep i was just losing it for a second there so um i boost the hit and get there just because i want to make sure i get the get the shot off and uh, I don't boost damage because it's only POW 12 essentially against him. So it's dice off six. Seven. Seven, sorry. I forget he's 19, not 18. And then uh, I don't really do any damage to him, but at least he's going to be a lot easier for these Tormentors to punch on, which is good because essence is what keeps them around. And if I have to spend less essence to kill something, then that's the better part of better for me, right? You'll also notice that my, uh, my well is uh, still uh, dropping you know, blackjacks left and right, um, with, uh, rolling three souls for the turn. I have my shrieker on the bottom, get within contest range of the flag. Um, I think I took, I was thinking about taking a boosted shot at an initiate, but then decided not to, because first of all, I don't have any, because I kind of like, uh, tithing is like, I, I will, I'll make the joke that like tithing actually happens at the top of your turn because no one remembers it at the bottom yeah, of the you turn. Tithed on my turn. Yeah. This turn. Yeah, it was really, really rough. So um, the Shrieker doesn't have anything to do. Uh, I didn't even want to take any shots. It's just that it, it's as 
like 17 boxes or 12 boxes of meat to just sit there and contest that flag because the punch monk isn't going to come off and do anything with him. So uh, right now, I think what we're doing is we moved up Omodemos and we're trying to punch on the uh, the, initiate. the initiate. I did feat this turn. I haven't feated yet, but um, I'm really just trying to get the synergy chain up. So Ethan let me keep it. So there's no reason for me to not try and utilize it here. So I start swinging into the initiate. And at this point, you've martyred him a bunch of times. I martyred him enough to make you decide, do you buy attack or do you summon a heavy? Yep. So I decided to not pull a heavy into the game. I feel like I've still got quite a few heavies and Ethan's going to be losing some warjacks this turn. So I don't feel like I need to keep pushing that, uh, that, you know, motive to keep going in the game. Like I, I know that it feels weird to say, well, I just don't need to summon anything as an infernal player. Cause who wouldn't want more heavies? But, um, I decide to camp a couple and start punching back on the initiated again. Um, unfortunately the ones that I ended up buying didn't end up hitting on him. Yep. Cause you were under awe. Yeah. So, uh, I, I'm sitting on one right now, and I say my Tormentor is just going to go do the work instead. So he goes up and starts punching at mat seven and uh, can't quite close the deal, which uh, isn't a, the biggest problem in the universe. I think like this probably was just like I was hoping to get more synergy chains up. Um, but now we're going to we're going to float over to the other side where we've got like every Tormentor in all of Kane going coming down on this paladin or the champion of the order of the wall um or we're actually hitting the the crusader now with the one that is contesting the flag i think that's what we're doing um maybe we're not this is this is the paladin now we're going to the crusader so the paladin took a little bit of damage but now we're just popping up the crusader and do a, a pretty decent amount of work with that one tormentor that's up there more importantly we get more synergy chains going and uh now we're gonna go float over to the paladin because i don't really need to get rid of the crusader one of its arms is crippled and it's not looking real hot otherwise so i'm going to try and focus on this paladin to try and get him out of there um we dehorse him pretty quickly with the way that synergy is working and uh, a couple boosts here and there so he ends up ethan ends up letting him uh uh uh, de-horse, I guess, or dismount, that's the word I'm looking yep. for, into he, the zone. Yep, he dismounts in melee in the zone, so you keep buying attacks. Fails a tough, and then I martyred him. Yep, so we've got a lot of martyrs uh, throwing off over here on the paladin, which is fine, I guess. And then I'm, I martyred again. Yeah, I'm still burning a lot of time on my clock, but I need to get rid of this paladin so I don't let the... Uh, the scenario game like fall out from under me so we have another tormentor going into him because i figure that at some point ethan's going to be running out of life to be martyring with and there i just ran out yep so you just you're at three boxes now so you could martyr him one more time if you want to but that very much could seal your fate for the game it was a two and three chance of dying and then it, just, it made every jack over there mad yeah or made the cascader and the the Sanctifier and the Crusader. Yep. And I think uh, the, Menite the Menite Archon got a little angry too. Yep. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, Tormentor in the middle into that Sanctifier. And uh, we're just checking a, I'm just checking a few things on the stats on, on him uh, because I'm headbutting him. So I need to go look at the strength uh, because both my initials hit easy peasy. And after uh, a couple more punches, we take him out without any issues. So now Ethan's down two jacks, and all the paladins are gone, and uh, I'm still super down on clock, and my scenario presence isn't looking super great. So I decide to, uh, I guess the other jack isn't down yet, but spoiler, he's going to die in a second. Yeah, he just died. So um, that makes me feel decent, at least, that there's going to be less to be fighting back into the Tormentors, so I feel like I can play a little more fast and loose. So Valen Hawk goes up and just tries to get a lucky charge on a initiate since Ethan's down on martyrdom. I feel like it's a good chance for me to do it. So I do take out one of the one of the uh, the paladins. So that makes me feel decent, I guess. And here the book is actually far enough up to stop some cultists from loading up Fury. Yeah, it's worth noting that when I feed it, I couldn't do locked horns. And I just forgot that the book was there again and, and couldn't uh, top off any of the essence. So I at least have enough between the hermit and the cultists that weren't in range of the book to be able to make sure that they can tithe to stick around this turn. And then here you're doing a shot just into the initiates. Oh, yeah. I, this is this is classic Brian into Harbinger is if I've got a shot, I'll take it. And you're just like, yes, do it. Yeah, you made the other jacks on that side mad. There's exactly. A, the Menite Archon and the Devout are now mad. So 
So after Brian's turn, we both scored our zones. So now I'm up five to two. So I just need to clear one flag and contest the zone, and I win. Uh, so I take my Righteous Vengeance move there just to not proc a counter charge. And I figure the bottom side's the side I'm going to be able to do, just murder that guy. Because the top one still has one uh, Tormentor up there, but I don't have a Jack anymore. But we're here. Like, I have a Mennite and a Crusader. So, like, if I can clear the bottom flag and contest a zone, like, I think I win. Because then I would go to 8 to 2. So there I do the healing from the objective. And then this, the Hierophant goes. So I heal myself up another 6. So I'm back up to 12. Not purifying last turn was rough. Because I was hoping eventually, like... The lines engage to a point where when I purify synergy, you have to back away to recast it. Yeah, because of the book. Yep. And, like, it's really hard for you to kill the book just because of martyrdom and awe. Well, and it takes so many attacks to kill the book that um, it's difficult. It's like a whole tormentor needs to go in and just do that one thing. Mm -hmm. So I go up, I battle. The devout moves up, just does some punch in to see if maybe I can start to clear the middle flag. Just in case plans fail. Yeah, I think you were also trying to get him out of the way of another Jack that was hanging out back there. I wanted him to also engage the Tormentor so you didn't oh, get the yeah. counter charge out of the woods. Yep. Because, like, even without Tactician, you still got to deal with, like, five plus counter charges. So there, Sanctifier goes. He has Hand of Vengeance from the theme and from a dude dying, and I battled him, so he's swinging at a casual POW 22. Yep, and that uh, that's making some quick work of that Tormentor. And I hit on a three, thanks to Hand of Vengeance. Yeah, so my Tormentor's gone. So the one thing I had in that bottom zone that was contesting is gone. Also, it's worth noting that the Shrieker died because I couldn't tithe it. Yeah, you didn't allocate to it. So like when you went to do tithe, they're like, oh, yeah. Yep, so then that ended up finishing out the game where Ethan was able to score uh, eight or seven to my two and could have made it eight if we kept the game going. But um, given the way things were shaken out, we figured it was fine to just end it there and move on, uh, especially before the final game in this like bracket style single elimination. It's bracket. It's bracket esque. It's like a love letter to brackets. It's a bracket without being a bracket. So it's just a, yeah, single, it's a elimination single elimination steamroller. Single elimination Swiss. Yeah. So um, Harbinger ends up taking it. So that means if you've watched the previous video, which hopefully you have, um, it's going to be Circle and Protectorate going into the final round. So um, overall, I think in hindsight, my, my, my idea that Omodemos was going to do well in this matchup wasn't too far off. I think uh, forcing you to purify and getting some synergies here and there to work um, ended up making my uh, my tormentors hit things a little bit easier than what they would have with Zadaroth, where she would have to be really spending a lot more essence to get things going. Um, also, in the Zadaroth list, it's a little bit harder to utilize the uh, Knowledge of the Damned on Orin Midwinter, but in this one I got to use it a little bit to try and get some mileage out of there and fix some of my hit rolls. Um, I think that it really... It, there's probably Infernal players who will be like, why didn't you just play... Zadaroth because she's got the whole like if you purify my stuff you're going to take a bunch of damage too um, but I really just felt like synergy and a very active caster was going to get me somewhere unfortunately I think as I played the game further on I just realized I was getting way too cagey like you're um, if I have locked horns up you can't strip it and you can't ignore it with anything. So if I were just presenting my uh, tormentors up a little bit further and making you use the time to come in and kill them with things, uh, and then I was starting to backfill them with other summons, I think that probably would have put me in a little bit better of a position, and I'd be more in the central so that Harbinger would have to hang back more, and every time she would get uh, would do synergies, she might be, or do uh, martyrdom, sorry, she would probably be a little bit more... Um, in danger of things because the tormentors would be so far and then i'd be projecting my threat further with the feet um i don't know if the with the veil and hawk chains to tactician i feel like that gate gets in my way a lot of times yeah the gate before the nerf like the gate would just be dead center in the middle and you're like oh i run through a turn one i'm like, or, I feel like that's what Infernal's player did. They just played yeah. it central. You, you play run it central through. because you're going to be able to use the teleport for everything. You can see the table, and now you've really got to pay a lot of attention to how you deploy around it. And it, it just, uh, maybe I'm just 
not good at working around a piece like that, but it happens with the well too. Like I have to play it out of the way. And if I'm looking for something like that central forest in there, um, you know, I want to make sure that my guys are not chunking up on my huge base as well. So, uh, I think that it was, it wasn't in a bad place per se, but it definitely could have been in a better one. Um, overall though, I think the game was not terrible other than just, I really dropped the ball on scenario cause I just was being really, really, uh, um, conservative with my tormentors. Mm -hmm. You wanted to try and keep them all in locked horn range and then like you couldn't the bottom flag you couldn't really get to the only thing you could have done was run the shrieker that you summoned turn one yeah which wouldn't have been a bad play because then i would have had to either like send in the menite to hopefully kill it which i think a menite even without being angry with, probably will get it yeah with two they're, attacks they're divine like inspiration. 14 13 or something like that their their stats are not really great uh yeah and like 15 on the sword and then power 13 on the flail so it's like with yeah. divine manifestation wouldn't take a lot of effort it's just then my menites up the board yep but then, like, I don't think anything over there threatens it because I just put initiates in the way. And yeah. yeah, I don't disagree with that. No, awe, like, just stacking awe, ash and veil, and like set defense was good. It, like, it did what I thought it did. Like, you you were missing a lot of attacks on even just that champ in your zone because Harvey was able to get up far enough where it's like, okay, all those dudes punched it are minus two to hit yeah they're coin flips and when i'm when i'm missing attacks on sevens with uh with tormentors it gets really rough because then i have to think like do i boost these things to hit and if i boost it it's just giving you more value on my attack because you'll just martyr that and be like ha i got an essence out of it too so um between that and the book and where the cultists were positioned it's hard for me to kind of get the essence fueling back up i know that a lot of people don't like using the cultists as essence batteries but when you're spending them down so much and they're just there it works out pretty well i think uh it's not something that i play to make happen it's just if it happens it's worth it but um yeah it was a uh, was tough stuff just missing some of those attacks and watching the tormentors dwindle down not being able to do the work that they normally would otherwise mm -hmm. like and i think you touched on like your two biggest mistakes were when I feed it and you just walked into it. Yeah, with, uh, when Runewood. Runewood went down it with that. He was like probably one of the one of the three key pieces in this list that can play and make the make the game into your army better. And uh just, you know, paying it not paying attention and losing him right away was a real big mistake on my part. And then uh yeah, playing KG was a was a rough one too. Yeah, I thought when you moved Runewood up, you're like, I thought you were just assuming like, oh, he'll survive the feet roll. Yeah, I know. and that's why you're getting gritty with the curse. But then you ended within five of the Menite, so it's like, well, now this is a yeah, it's dice 16. damage, yeah, or dice plus two. So it was real. There was no chance he was going to live through that. Well, a six percent chance, right? So um, overall, though, like when I when I think about infernal lists, I uh, um, clearly at least play them every once in a while because almost the whole list is finished being painted but um mostly because it was for adepticon but uh i really think that when you bring five tormentors with omodemos that you end up losing a lot of the support that you would normally want out of a infernals list like i get that the probably back when tormentors were like mat seven and could go through things and counter charge like crazy i feel like five was all right back then like it was still it was kind of a judgment call really or your flavor you know it was like coke and pepsi even though one is superior to the other mm. um but, but which one is it it's always coke you're wrong but no, okay you're, you're wrong so um and <laughs> um god damn it the coke pepsi i'm sorry did i derail off. your thought you threw me off with the coke pepsi fight ethan i don't even know who you are anymore um so it's probably because you're like more into Mountain Dew and not because you'd like Pepsi more than Coke. Let's just not. Let's no, not I'd, kid like, I like Pepsi. God damn. That was what my dad drank when I was a kid. So like, that's what I drank. So gross. It brings back like fond <clears throat> childhood memories. You, you keep your memories. It's all right. Yeah. Um, so for me, I like having four tormentors because what would have happened in this matchup and outside of that would be that I get a couple 
uh, more wretches, which are really good in this matchup, being able to get extra Grievous Wounds out there. The Martyrdoms would just kind of go away at that point, and I'd just be really fighting the hit rolls. And uh, then I'd be getting one more solo and being able to do some more stuff with Marked Souls, because I feel like this list, if you're running for the grind in the long run, uh, your Torment, your Marked Souls fall down pretty quickly, like they dwindle real fast. But it's not to say that I don't like like the list or appreciate it i'm sure that someone who's a little bit more of a full-time infernal player in quotes probably plays this list a lot better than i do but um overall i just like the 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 cushioning or the 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 floaties of having uh more mark souls and more uh support pieces than having five tormentors that i can project out i mean i think that's fair like you said now with like that's two wretches and linda and like for 12 points that's pretty good i i like the five tormentor version it's just i feel like you're right like you have there's to be a certain more, way to play it yeah. there's a certain way to play it and you have to be more familiar with it like i feel like and stephanie can correct us if we're wrong uh but like it's almost like you have to pick and choose your summoning every turn whether you're going to summon every turn because like you don't have those throwaway mark souls like when we talked about a turn one like the wretch is really important in this matchup but is he more important than Princess, Runewood, or Orin, Hawk, yeah, all, Orin. The, all those fellas. Like, I mean, there's like four to five Mark Soul targets that you're like, I need this past turn one. Yep. And like Hawk was your like your seven point solo. My like, seven point solo. They, I'd only be getting five extra points out of that. Uh, seven, because isn't the they're the 12, right? fourteen? Oh yeah, fourteen. Yeah, no, so I could get a little bit of value. Fuck <laughs> off. Uh, but <laughs> it's just like I feel like you do need more experience with the list. Whereas like Harby, this is my third Harby game. I made a few mistakes, like not being up far enough to martyrdom the bottom champion when the front of his base was in the zone. So like I could have been like being KG that way. Like not to like say Harby's an easy caster to play, but it like no, there's just a really big part of the game that she scalpels out. It's and like, it's knowing when to pop your feet because you don't really need to do that with her. You're just like, are you close enough to, to me where things will die when they come in or get damaged when they come in? Yes, then I feet. It's not like you have to really hold that for the late game or anything. And then you have little bubbles of management because of faithful masses and menites that you need to deal with. And once you get that, that could be a little bit hard to control or figure out. But then I think the only thing about Harbinger that's really, really difficult is learning that she is a lot more safe and resilient than you think she is yeah like in this matchup i was able to martyrdom down the three boxes just because i'm not under threat like the i'm out of range of the well or not the well the gate i have one shield guard next to me for the shrieker so it's like i can afford to camp one and just blow my stack on purification guided hands healing going down the three and not be too afraid yep like and that was that was a weird feeling like just knowing like my caster's on three health and you don't bottom, care <laughs> bottom of two bottom of three and it's just like meh yeah like SSDD right not, not like the last game if you watch these the first game of round yeah, two if you watch them in the where right your order. caster was on do we want to put spoilers about the other game or I guess you already talked it's about it's fine I mean like Iona was on two boxes for the <laughs> she <laughs> yeah was, she was on she two was boxes and one boxes <laughs> and you're like this is not good whereas she me I'm real, like real real scared I'm like I'm on three yeah who Yo, gives well, a shit what's gonna get to me exactly she's like that uh that that like uh um uh that that uh can, god damn it what word am I looking for Ethan she's like the disgruntled teenager that's just like doesn't care about anything like she'll she'll she's she'll drive teen. she'll drive with her seatbelt off take that mom and dad screw you exactly so um overall like i guess one of the other things that's hard to get your get used to with harbinger is knowing what to martyr like what matters and what doesn't like you don't need to martyr every single thing out there um so but that's that's just kind of your thing though you don't need to start peace trading with her in a you can well i guess you can start making bad decisions with her because they're really not that bad like yeah but that really like it that relies on your opponent making you make those bad choices like yeah. i had each turn i was like okay i have one model in your zone i wonder what model i'm gonna martyrdom this turn yeah the skill level the the valley between the skill level tracks for harbinger and or for your opponent get uh, a lot more um widened when you're when you're playing against harbinger right so like in a normal game of war machine non-harbinger if your opponent's just a little bit lower of skill level than you then 
they, it usually kind of you're, you're not too far from each other like there's a little bit of a chance for the person with the lower skill level to push back on a good player some bad dice or some good dice or something but with harbinger the more the the wider the skill level is it seems like as the game goes on it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger especially if you don't have the tools to deal with like martyrdom exactly and you also have to be really like um i guess i won't it's hard to say, but like you have to be like mentally centered in order to play against Harbinger sometimes because if you if they keep martyring this thing and you just can't kill it, like you could tilt off of just her normal like mechanic. Yeah, and then like when you get into like oh she keeps rolling a one for martyrdom, which I did not roll the yeah, entire you were time. Rolling, you were rolling fire on. I was those rolling martyrdoms. twos and threes, and I made like three tough <clears throat> checks. It's when you get those like when a champion of the wall starts toughing and that's like one well, that Harvey didn't even need to roll martyrdom. Exactly. And that's like, Oh, well he finally failed a tough check. And it's like, Oh, Harvey rolled a one. She's got 15 more boxes. Let's do this again. Like it's kind of like infernals. Like you have to change how you play. And you, like you said, you can't let it get in your head when things start to go wrong. Otherwise it does snowball and you can't let her get a scenario lead but this scenario is so hard. Like, even if you contested both flags, I'm going to contest your zone probably. Like, yeah, because you can just throw things back there and not care because you can you can take a lot of measures to make sure that it'll survive. Like, I have a speed eight paladin. Like, he can just run around the tormentor brick and just be back there. Like, yeah, I won't be in martyrdom range, but you're not going to contest my zone. Like, unless you have ambushers, like it's just really hard on the scenario especially when your opponent goes first to threaten their square yeah and you have to be speed eight ambushing in order to actually get in the zone the turn you ambush so like things just get wonky with that mm -hmm. and i even thought about ambushing anastasia turn two just to run her into position to run for next turn and contest yeah just so like a tormentor has to turn on or a cultist has to try and punch her yeah there could have been some value in this game even with me ambushing cultists instead of putting them on the table like yeah i don't get my knowledge of the damn thing going on but um you know four cultists running around punching choir or something is still still valuable i guess but maybe uh, i don't know maybe it's just not worth it i feel like if you had ambushed i wouldn't have feeded turn two because like say, yeah because then you'll hold them for when i do get them yeah in. like you ambush bottom of two they run they're not in my zone yet i feed turn three and it's just like nothing gets in my zone like that's why i feeded so far forward i'm like okay i want to make sure you don't score the middle flag any solo that wants to go on that flag pretty much just dies to my feet because there's a menite archon behind the woods so it's like take an auto hitting pow 16. yeah the menite archons are probably one of the most active archons in the game right now since the death archon isn't out but they're also like they have the ability in menoth to be really supportive instead of just being you know smash faced i mean yeah they're a good second layer piece like, when you can stack uh, the Ashen Veil, like, if they're right butt-to-butt -butt with, like, Initiates or a Jack, slightly offset, and then, like, you stack that with Awe. But that's just, like, the game plan. Even, like, outside Harby, bringing Ashen Veil along with, like, even, like, a Sanctifier that has Ashen Veil, like, you can spread the bubble out, and now your Def 13 guys can become, like, Def 15. Yeah. Or even Def 17 against the charge. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really respectable. That was one of the things that I noticed I did on accident when I charged an initiate. I was like, damn it, Brian, you charged it. You're supposed to just walk and punch. You're like, oh, my outer ring's full. Like, yeah, I charge for the free. Charge, yeah, yeah with my POW 19 guy into your arm 17 dude, let's do this. Arm 15. 15, sorry, yeah. But he was, was just, Def... <laughs> was just dumb. He was Def 17 because of awe and set. Yeah. So, uh... Definitely a, an interesting game, nonetheless, at least for just showing kind of the pitfalls of what happens when you play against Harbinger inappropriately. Um, I definitely spent a lot of time taking out Paladins, but it was worth doing to get make sure that my zone stayed free and clear. There were a lot of shots that I didn't need to take that I did, but uh, definitely did not play as far forward enough. I feel like that probably is the thing that I don't get to experience with this list and why I like the Four Tormentors better is because I just was not leveraging the locked horn tormentors as jamming pieces instead of just trying to be like i'm gonna i'm gonna get you you know yeah you're trying to play the long game against a caster that plays the long yeah, game she, she lives in the long game yeah where if like i feel like you could have pushed up the tormentors like 
there's a brick of like four of them, five know, of them. Yeah, up they're on all the just hanging there. out there. Like they if have... they literally just like circled around. Yeah. Like I feel like you had to pick a side and flood it with tormentors and try and just bash your way through. Exactly. Clear yeah. that side while like hoping the other side doesn't collapse. Like you might put like princess over there with a shrieker. Just you just keep summoning a contest bot every turn or a four boater. Yeah, something over there. I but... mean, you'll summon something over there eventually, but like I feel like. If the brick had just moved, like, it's not one Tormentor, it's five Tormentors, like, duct taped together, like, Zordon style, <laughs> and, then, like, they just move as a unit. Yeah, I, that that's definitely, uh, if I had this game to do over again, I'd probably play it a lot more aggressively, because that's one of the reasons why I dropped Omodemos anyways, was because I was like, Omodemos can threat harbinger like he's just a big tanky caster, and unless you get a jack on him, there's very little chance of your of anything else in your army being able to kill him and i just didn't leverage that enough no like even a menite if you're camping i won't kill you like a menite might like hurt you yeah hurt him but not kill him and i have heals for whatever so yeah but that uh brings us into going into the finals that'll happen sometime soon at least and that again will be protectorate against circle yeah we'll see how that goes england meets uruguay Ooh, fancy 